We start this morning with our friend Eliza Lord with AppalachianFeet.com here to tell us how she turns weeds into a dish for the table. I'm, I'm always intrigued by these how-tos that you do on your blog. This is a, a perfect one for this morning. Good morning to you. Happy New Year. I guess the last time we were here, we were cracking nuts over in the kitchen. We were, and actually today <laughs> I have black walnuts, which are even harder. You can't even crack right. them with Right, I'm your glad the, the cracking is already done. <laughs> yeah. Done for us. So um, for those who missed the last episode that you were here, tell us a little bit about what you do. You're all about sustainability, foraging, and teaching other people how to sustain for themselves. Yes, um, I have a fourth acre urban farm, and so I also do homesteading, but a lot of what we do, we don't even have to grow because <laughs> we just go out and find it. And uh, in order to do that, it's, it's kind of amazing how many you just have right in your front yard. Right, and so we wanna be able to teach people how to use what they have to, to, to save some money, save some time, and probably eat a little healthier as well. Absolutely. Okay, so tell us about the demo we have here. We don't have as very much time, but. Okay, well then let's just throw this in here. Um, we've got chickweed which is kind of my favorite wild green, I think, and a lot of people spend a lot of time trying to weed this, mm -hmm. but uh, it's pretty uh, attractive. It's succulent and it has these yeah, little white that. daisy flowers. And some of these are found in, like, just out in people's yards? Yes, uh, and a lot of people are familiar with wild onions. Yeah. Uh, they're all over the place. Um, I did have to cheat a little today because <laughs> my greens were frozen. <laughs> And, uh, and so I have some arugula, which also was kind of wild in my yard because it seeded itself. Okay. But um, it, it, wasn't, um, it wasn't something that isn't <laughs> culinarily popular. Um, so in your classes, you kind of take people through looking at these different yes. greens and figuring out, you know, what could be edible in your yard, mm -hmm. what you may want to steer clear from. And I do seasonal foraging classes because there's different things available. Right. Uh, this Smart. is plantain. It's another one that's really common. I don't usually use a lot of that because it's more mm -hmm. tough. Uh, and there's another one here that I'm not seeing, but it's called uh, Field Penny Cress. Okay. Um, and that one's really good. A lot of the cresses, they're in the uh, same family as the arugula. So a lot of education um, goes into these classes. Yeah. You're, you're learning a lot here. Yeah. Okay, so we have our greens in there. We, we have do. some beautiful... Onions we may, here? We may have to just, if we have short time, I'll put the garlic in later, but we're okay. going to put in That's some... a garlic. See, that's how much I know. It looks like <laughs> an onion to me. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we have some, some... I need to take some foraging and homesteading classes, apparently. We have some blue cheese, <laughs> and we have the um, black walnuts, and I actually brought walnut oil to go with that. Okay. Um, and then um, I've toasted some day-old bread from the Swamp Rabbit Cafe, and this is some of their hothouse tomatoes that are local. I love them. They and a lot of the so a lot of your classes are offered at um, the Swamp Rabbit Cafe. Yes. So if you're interested in that, you can definitely check them out as well. So mm -hmm. we put the oil in here. Yes. And that and just gives it a little bit of a little. Um, I don't know. It just wettens it a little bit. It dampens it a little bit. It does. It makes it so that you can spread it once um, you you know you're putting it on pasta or bread. But it also makes it so that it will run in your food processor. Okay. Um, and this part, you know, you do want two cloves of garlic in here too, and everything's around a third of a cup, but you can look up pesto recipes. So then just give it a little good grinding there. Yep. And we're just looking for the consistency, the paste. Yep. It's kind of hard to see my buttons. <laughs> we're putting in super speed, fast speed. <laughs> All right. So now we have... And just like that, we have some pesto, huh? Yeah, it's sort of pesto without the garlic, and the garlic's pretty important. <laughs> <laughs> so if we want to keep up with what's going on, other classes that you're offering, what's the best way for us to do that? Um, to go to www.appalachianfeet.com. Okay. Um, and, and a lot of these demos, too, you have like broken down on there. You're not keeping them as secrets. They're, they're on the blog. Yes, I do. I mean, the blog is a how-to blog, so a lot of these things are um, already on there. As I'm going to try not to eat the... And I'm going to eat this bread later on Swamp Rabbit, but I want to eat this first. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> That's good stuff. And if you don't like blue cheese, you can use Parmesan, um, but I like it with the um, wild greens. That's great. And we just made that right now. Yep. Mm. Thank you very much. I'm trying to eat. Remind <laughs> people again where to find you online. www.appalachianfeet.com and click on the classes tab. Perfect. And now I can talk again. Eliza, thank you so much for coming to see us. <laughs> Happy New Year to you.